this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Set up a website with a 14 day free trial and 10% off your first order with the code and link in the description box below. Okay, so here I have got one of my most favorite film cameras ever, but this is actually the first time I'm using it because I just bought one, there's a Nikon F6. Yes. I'm so happy that I've got it. I've got it off the evil bay and it's the last and the greatest ever film SLR ever made, ever. Ever. Just in case I haven't said ever. Ever. 35mm film cameras just didn't get any better and probably won't ever get any better than this. The Nikon F6. And this is the camera you should look for if you're looking for the ultimate film camera. This was introduced in 2004 and produced right up until 2020, which means there should be a fair amount of these available, but not as much as you'd like to think. It's a pro-grade camera would have shaved off the battery, but therefore shaving off some of the weight, therefore making it more svelte. Sure, it's not compact, but this is a far better camera to be lugging around compared to, say, an F5. In typical Nikon style, the body is just so solid, it's just like brick with rubber on it. If you've used any of Nikon's SLRs or DSLRs, you'll know what that feels like, but this is thinner than the Nikon DSLR because it doesn't have those digital gubbins inside. Interestingly, it does have a little menu system here, which you pull the flap down. <laughs> it's like a little Game Boy. I mean, it's actually not too much smaller than a Nikon D70 LCD screen. And one cool feature with the F6 is that you can actually use a CF card external to record EXIF data. <laughs> I remember back in 2004, I was recording settings and stuff like that on a piece of paper. No, you don't need it with this. This is high tech for its time. EXIF data. With the F6, they introduced a new shutter, which makes the sound more dampened apparently, but look, it's an SLR, so it's still gonna clack like that. But hold on a minute, they also introduced a silent shutter mode, which you can access here. <laughs> That's a new definition of silent. <laughs> is, is there actually a difference? If you're coming from mirrorless, when you look through the finder, it is just simply gorgeous. It's huge. And of course, it is exactly as what your eye see via the lens, of course. Welcome bit of spray. We love this spray. It is sweltering here. It is so hot today. The sun is out and it's like 33 degrees or something like that. I'm in, I'm in the Saksa, Tokyo. And I'm just outside that big famous lantern that everybody takes photos of when they come to Tokyo. And I guess I'll probably take photos of it, but I've got 50 millimeter which means I'm kind of limited. It's a 50mm f1.4D, slightly older, but I find that this focuses quicker than the more modern f1.4G. And I think it's a better lens. f1.4G was a bit of a stinker. By the way, the F6, you can use this with any lenses from the internal focusing AFS lenses to the AFD lenses, which require the little mechanical thing to focus lens. You can use any of Nikon's old manual focusing lenses, but of course, there is no focusing patch in the viewfinder. But even though this lens's autofocus is mechanically driven, it doesn't make it any slower than the AFS version. In fact, it's probably quicker. It just makes a hell of a lot more noise. Now, this is one of my favorite Nikon lenses, which I've used on the D70, on the F4, and for sure on the F6, this focuses this lens much quicker than the D70 and the F4. Now, being a 2004 camera, the tech is of its time. I mean, the autofocus, it's got 11 autofocus points, all of them cross type, apart from two, and it's got less autofocus points than the Canon EOS 1V, which was introduced four years before this. But this came about at a sort of transitional period when, say, sports photographers were moving towards digital because it just makes more sense, right? So although 11 autofocus points and 5.5 FPS burst doesn't sound like much by modern day standards, for a film camera, the kind of thing you'll be using this for, it's plenty. When you're so used to shooting with modern digital cameras, it's very easy to take everything for granted. 
This is still film camera, but it's just so fast. I mean, the burst rate is not exactly blindingly fast. It's 5.5 FPS or 8 FPS, but still, that's a lot of money spent in a very short amount of time. And it's not just the burst rate, it's the way it acquires focus. This is better than any other film camera for focusing. It's the last, the fastest, the bestest. The Canon might have more AF points, but the Nikon is certainly a more sophisticated system. I mean, for a start, you've actually got a D-pad, so you can select the autofocus points. And although 11 autofocus points, at least it will actually track the subject across the frame. But if you are coming from a current digital camera to this, you kind of have to reset your expectations because it is a 2004 camera, not a 2024 camera. The focus is quick, but not blisteringly quick. So today I've loaded Kodak Pro Image 100. It's really hard to get Fujifilm. Shortage of supplies apparently. And the first time I ever came to Tokyo, that was by myself. Set photo geek coming here to take photos. I stayed in a Saksa, so this has lots of memories for me. I stayed in a little rear can just around here. I went to the public baths as well. A nice hot bath. I kept staring at all the other guys around just to see what I have to do. Just to make sure I'm doing the right thing. And there's this guy with uh, lots of tattoos. I kept staring at him. Not a wise thing to do. The F6 might not have as many AF points as the EOS 1V, but the metering system in the F6 is far superior. The Nikon uses a 3D color matrix meter, whereas the Canon still meters in black and white. The Canon has a valuative metering, but the Nikon 3D color matrix metering considers more things like the depth and what is actually in focus as well as considering what the prominent colours in the scene are, hence the name 3D Colour Matrix Metering. But anyway, if you're looking to buy one of these, they're probably going to set you back around £700 or around $900 for an alright-ish one. Of course, given that they were made between 2004 to 2020, you could get something which is like new, or you could get something which probably needs a servicing. Now one of the common problems is the internal battery, not the battery that powers up the camera, but for this bit. Now if you're getting a slightly old F6, chances are that internal battery is not going to be performing very well, and every time you power it up, the clock has been reset. Sounds like a small issue, but if that internal battery is not working very well, it saps power from your main power source here which means you'll probably be finding that you need to replace these more often than you ought to. But you know, given that this was introduced and its life was throughout a whole transitional period where people were ditching their film cameras and moving to digital SLRs and then ditching DSLRs and moving on to mirrorless, probably not too many of these were actually sold. So there aren't too many of these available. The chances are if you're searching for one on eBay, it's probably going to be from Japan. Yeah, so budget for around $1,000 or 700 to 800 pounds. Alternatively, you could go to Japan Camera Hunter. I think he's got one on his website, which costs a little bit more, but it is serviced by Nikon. So it's going to be in fantastic condition and ready for many, many more years of shooting. video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's just the best solution for setting up a website or online store quickly and easily because the interface makes it a breeze to do so. Start off with one of their neat looking templates, customize it, shift things around and that's it. Get going with a 14 day free trial and 10% off your first order. Links in the description down below.